So the water management, main water management system they have in place here, we have a dam here and catchment above there. There's about 11 hectares of catchment above this dam. And when that fills, this used to be the spillway here and which caused a lot of issue through the property, which would happen two or three times a year in the wet season and cause a lot of damage down there. So what we did was we put in a swale off to this side here across this slope, across this hill here and we moved the spillway to the far end so now the water channels so it's like a canal but it's actually a swale it's meant to hold water it holds about 250 mil of water before it spills out of the swale and when it does that it spills this way and goes and fills the dam so now we have a 1.4 hectare hill here catching water in the swale running off water into the swale and that gets put into the dam. When the dam is full and 100 mil higher than this point here, it'll spill at the far end. And then that diverts the water to the edge of our property. It doesn't move it out of the main streamway so much because it, it joins back up again where it originally would have went at the, at the other end. So it doesn't, means I can still function in here even though we have a, when we have a high um, rainfall situation. Uh, it was at maximum capacity and I was concerned that it was going to breach the swale and so to finish the, the mainframe design on the other side you can see a new scar on the other side there's a swale that goes around that hill that ridge line there and, and it spills at the far end so now I can have 50% of the water going that way and 50% of the water going this way which I can manage with sandbags I can put sandbags there and push the water this way, or I can put sandbags there and push the water that way. So I have con now can have control of which way the water will go. And when it spills that side, it goes actually into the creek, which is in on our side of the road. So it's on our property, the creek. On that end of the property, the creek's on the other side of the road, and, and the, all the water going down there actually causes damage to the road. So I'm actually helping the council or the, low, or the people further in the valley because they'll have less water on the road washing the road out in the high rainfall period of time. So it's a, a good management system but it's also going to infiltrate water into the, into the valley by holding the water in the swales and, uh, and in absorbing it in. So hopefully that's going to lift our production in that space. So after, how do you use this, uh, this water? You, you, the water you, you... The water we catch here yeah. in, the, in the dam, I use that for the gardens and for the animals through the year. We uh, we've got a solar pump on the dam which pumps it into a tank and that's gravity fed down yeah. onto the property. And uh, later on I'll be able to put, I'm intending to put more swales further down which I can divert the water back and then zigzag it down the rest of the property. On this side that won't occur because it, um, there's no room to put more swales in there. Any water that's caught below or runoff from below here gets caught in a swale down in the driveway and then that directs it into the food forest area down below the gardens. Uh, it will also be connected to a, two swales that will go across the front of the property down there so then we'll get a lot more water absorption in that area as each incremental stage comes in. Okay. And what are the main rules for the swale on every property? Like how far the swell has to be, ide ideally? It's going to de determine on a few factors. Uh, one is the, the amount of rainfall you get, uh, the, uh, the steepness of your slope, how much uh, energy or resources you've got to put into putting swales in. If you've got a lot of money, well then you can put a lot more in. But uh, it also depends on what you intend to do with the property because you can use the swales, like I was showing in the garden, the swales actually design the garden. So you can use the swales to design what you want to function the property to function for. Um, if you put too many swales in, then, then you might be stopping that. So um, there's no exact parameters. There's a, a, a given a few factors in there, and it's a bit it's local knowledge and experience yeah. and uh, understanding of what you're trying to achieve as to how many swales you put in. One of the first things you want to try and get in is the one swale that connects the whole system together and that's what this one here is doing. Now that I've got that section on that side there, it's going from that boundary to that boundary. So it's connecting the whole system. 
I'm control I can control the water in the whole system with this sway. Mm. And and now I can manage it and now I can be in bed sleeping and get a really, really severe thunderstorm and not have to be concerned about what's happening with the water system because yeah. it's managed. Because we do get large events here, 600 mil events overnight. It's not, not uncommon. Um, it's not often it happens, but it can occur. And when you have 600 mil, that's this amount of water running over your property. You need to be able to control that. And so I don't have to worry about fences being damaged or anything like that because of this system. It's a large system, but it's, um, it's not finished yet. I have more planting to do, and that one there will be... It's giving me an edge now to have a food forest and a goat paddock. I want to put goats up into that slope up there. So it's part of the design. It's going to give me a, an edge that I can manage, and there'll also be a timber section in there as well. Um, before you put the swale in, you, there's no idea where to put anything. You're just guessing. But now that's in there, it's, it's all on contour, so it it's, uh, gives you ideas and uh, parameters to work in. Mm -hmm. So what are the rainfall, annual rainfall here? Here is about... Two about meters? 1,500 <laughs> to 1,600 mil per year. 1,500 to 1,600 mil. It's been fluctuating and I've only been in the area mm -hmm. for, for uh, probably 10 years in this valley. And so I'm only learning of what, yeah. what the, and with climate change, you know, not sure, and and the local change, clearing, and and uh, what's happening in the area, we don't know what exactly what it is. But it's quite, it's more than it was in Western Australia. <laughs> That's for sure. In Western Australia, I only had 325 millimeters of rainfall, and I got soil improvement on 2,500 hectares in seven years of management, which is. Um, Pretty good. What a swale is doing is infiltrating in the soil. It's, it's not really a natural process. We are doing something a little bit different than we would see in nature because permaculture principles and, and philosophy is to, to uh, copy nature. But what we're doing when we put a swale in is we're actually showing what, we're replicating what trees do. A tree has the ability with its mutual with the organisms in the soil is the organisms and the fungal hyphae actually hold the water in the soil. You remove the trees, they don't have a mutualism process anymore, so they don't need to hold the water in the soil. And so to speed up the process of getting the water into the soil so that we can function from there, that point and down slow, we put in the swale which rehydrates the soil. If this was totally forested, all this section down here was totally forested, there would be moisture in the soil from the wet season. But because it's been cleared, there's nothing there to hold the moisture in the soil. So we put the swale in and that causes a water bubble effect in the soil. The water, instead of taking maybe uh, one and a half days, even less than one and a half days to wash over the soil surface, will sit in the swale and be absorbed and might take two years to get to the bottom of the slope and into the creek system. So while it's, that moisture's in the soil, then our plants can function. And we need to grow more plants. This is mostly grass in here. I need to grow more plants in here that are going to have more depth. Even though that's a damn stuff on here, just small stuff on here. But especially on the hill slope, on the paddock over there. Okay. And for a flat area, uh, do, do you have water management, for example? There's all, always some slope, unless okay. you're in a salt lake, and you're not going to garden much in a salt lake. So there's always water movement, so we'll always put swales in okay. to manage the water, or we'll do deep ripping on contour. There's always a contour line, or there's some way of managing that water. Okay. And we will do that. Yeah, I read too that uh, in temperate climate, maybe you don't know a lot, I, I understand, but that uh, the annual crop are um, we prefer to plant annual crop and in a tropic climate or subtropic it's better to have perennial do you know what is the explanation of this it's about the season it's, it's the season it's the climate season okay and, and so there's when you go more to the colder temperates the cold temperate yeah so you, so you're going to have a, a, sh a shutdown period when there's nothing growing uh, it's in dormancy yeah and then, then it's a so it's a it's a directive that it's going to be annual crops, and that's that system is more conducive 
it's different it's for annual plants it's made for annual plants there is perennials there but there's there's also a large area for annuals and you'll find in your layers there's actually two herbaceous species in there so it's meant for for small plants what is two herbaceous species what is it so you have a herbaceous layer you know so herbs are oh, yeah layer. okay yeah that you'll actually get two two layers of herbs in the temperate yes. where when you go into the tropics you only have one layer of the herbaceous but you'll have more layers of the tree species. You'll actually get two mm. layers of palms. Okay. So you're getting more, it's all more directive of being a, a, a perennial system and not an um, annual system. Okay. We, we read also that in Dumpret climate there's no chop and drop. No? I would still do chop and drop in there. The, the mm. climate that you're going to have the most challenge to do chop and drop is uh, drylands because you do your chop and drop when it's when it's a, a rainfall higher than the evaporation and in drylands evaporation is always 90% of the time 95% of the time is it's always evaporation is higher than rainfall mm -hmm. and so you're not going to find a time to do chop and drop but in so you need what that what that's about is well we're doing chop and drop for mulch to, to build soils We'll use plant species to, to build the soil with mulch uh, to protect the soil but in your time of high evaporation you need shade so what you'll try and do in the dry lands is to have a pollard species so these species that you can cut at this height or whatever it is so that it'll it'll spring back growth really quickly and still give you the shade not the not the um, coppice species but you'll still do chop and drop in temperate yeah. And even in drylands, but you, you've got to be really, really careful in drylands because it's all about shade. Mm. It's all about evaporation, and shade mm. reduces evaporation. So if you have a look at our my bananas at the moment, we are in evaporation over rainfall period of time now. We have more evaporation than rainfall, as you can see by everything's looking quite dry. Um, I'm leaving all the banana leaves hanging, the dead banana leaves hanging because I need I need shade now. I'm limited on my water, so I need shade. And also those hanging banana leaves will actually pick up moisture in the cool morning when there's moist air coming from the coast. Mm. So they'll actually harvest moisture. So I'll use them for a purpose. But as soon as my as soon as I know I'm definitely into a season of rainfall higher than evaporation, then I'll go in and chop and drop those dead leaves. Mm. 